Good morning, friends. Welcome to another edition of Timmy Talks. And today we are heading to Chennai. So come along. We are starting from Tanjavur. And today I'll be taking the train to Chennai. And here's the destination of the train station. And let's go check it out. Okay, just arrived, and as you can see, the board is a very clear. My train is 22676, Chozon Express to Chennai. It's on platform one, leaves at 11.05. So it's the same as yesterday. And we are on schedule target so we can head inside and uh, get to our air and maybe grab some snacks. Okay, so we enter and we're at A1, and we're going to go all the way down to B6. Let's check out the snacks now. Alright, she's turning into a coffee walla. Okay, we're early to the train, which is nice because no one's here, I don't have to rush, I can make sure everything's good. Because I understand that the train only stops for like two or three minutes at the most, and you have to hop on real quick <laughs> with your bags, everything. Mm, so I don't want to miss my train. So I'm here early, it's a precautionary measure because I'm not really familiar with the Indian train system. I mean, I'm getting there, but you know, I just want to make sure. So I'm here, I'm sipping my coffee. It wasn't chai, it was coffee, which, you know, I need my coffee in the morning. I'm looking a little tired. Okay, he was the only conductor that actually checked my passport. <laughs> Well, eventually the train got crowded as can be. Every spot was taken, but it was nice. It was nice to be around people and to enjoy the train ride. I had the upper bunk, so it was nice to be able to just look down and see everybody and see everything that's going on, sit back and enjoy my music. So I just had a little bit of lunch. I ordered a biryani. Um, I had was egg biryani, so rice and spices with eggs. And was as good as any festival food that I've had, so it was very good, and it was only 100 rupees. And now I ordered jackfruit, so here's some jackfruit, those big fruits. And um, I would prefer it to be a little bit more white, but it's very good. Okay, just got to Chennai, and I have to figure out where the exit is. <laughs> All right. Wow, I remember tonight being busy with uh, cars and motorcycles, but craziness. Okay, wanted to do a little viewing of my room. I have these beautiful hand-painted um, vines. Um, and here's the room. Here's the bathroom. It's again, the shower bathroom combo, but I, I love that spigot. You clean your feet with that. It's very nice. Bathroom, little um, table with a kettle. That's great. Some water, air conditioning. And look at this painting. This is hand painted. At first I thought it was maybe wallpaper, but it's, it's really pretty. It's hand painted. And the bed feels nice and soft so far. So, cross fingers. But a nice little room. Not bad. And it has a little fan cooling off at night. Air conditioner is going. So yeah, my, my room for the next few days in Chennai. And it has a little view of the main street outside. So I get to see what's going on outside. And, um... Yeah, I'm pleased, very happy. Okay, so my first night, I was super tired from traveling and I just wanted to stay in. And I'm glad I did, I made such a good choice. Attached to the hotel is a restaurant. 
and the restaurant serves biryani from the owner's family's recipe. It was the best biryani I've had outside of Hyderabad. And for dessert, I had an ice cream sundae, and it was so good. I highly recommend this place. It was fantastic. Today is my single day in Chennai. Good morning. <clears throat> and we're gonna take the subway and see where it leads us. So come along. Okay, so I just left the hotel and I'm on the way to a subway station, which it says it's not too far from here. Okay, well, cross one street with lights now. Let's see if we can cross this street. At least it has lights, so kind of gauge, you know, when to, use, when to use the crosswalk kind of thing. Okay, here's a old English building that is now turned into what I read was the local government, like city hall kind of thing but it was created from the English when it was uh, a settlement. Kind of abandoned. Whatever it is, it looks pretty. That would make a nice hotel, isn't it? Here's another English. I don't know, it looks like it's part of the same government complex. Let's see, that looks really nice. According to the map, it looks like this might be it, so we shall, oh, uh, maybe underground there, right? Let's go down. Let's go down subway. Okay. Okay. Let's check it out. So far, nice and clean. Central Metro, so down. I don't see any tickets up here, so let's check the down. Tickets! Right. Oh, look at how nice! Wow! That's great! Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so we're gonna go on the green line towards St. Thomas Mount is one. So we'll get on one today. And this card they said is good for getting on and off the subway. So it's good for the day. And if I return the card in good condition, then I get 50 rupees back. It'll only cost me a hundred rupees. So that's cool. That's very cool. It's very clean in here. It's um, not crowded. One is forward, okay. So, I have to go through another check. Okay. One. Looks like we can go. I don't know. Let's see. That one went towards St. Thomas now. Okay, fine, let's go. Oh, ladies only. Okay, thank you. So they separate the cars, only women. Of course, there's nobody in there, which is nice. So, all right, let's sit down here. The metro is very smooth. It's clean, quiet, no graffiti. <laughs> What's wrong with this metro? Station is a college station, so I just want to get out and see easily 
there might be restaurants or things to do around college areas so let's get out and check it out since I can get on and off with this pass why not there's the St. George Indian Secondary School but there's nothing what is this there's nothing around Oh, another college. Pachayapa College, okay. I mean, it's definitely like a college area, but <laughs> uh, design school over there. But there's nothing, nothing doing around. So, all right, back to the metro we go. So we are here at Panchayapa College. And maybe we'll stop at see what Ananagar Tower is about. Then we'll go to Ekathangal. I know that there's an ATM there that I need. So I will go there and then we'll end up at St. Thomas Mount. So that's the route we will take for now in six minutes. Okay, train is arriving. So. And then the guard tower, here we come. <clears throat> it looks like this is the right way to go. So let's see if the map starts telling me otherwise. And they have sidewalks. Now they're not the greatest sidewalks, but hey, you don't have to walk in the middle of the street. <laughs> so very nice. I'll take it. says I'm going the right way. So it says make a right on me. Here's some suits. I really would like to find that turn right on main road. Trail fruit, but I don't think it's common. I don't know. I'm gonna ask the general manager at the hotel. I mean I know he's kind of new himself but I think he might ask around for me, which is better than I could do. So, all right, my block Main Street might be here. In 900 right. feet, turn right on 6th Main Road. Let's check it out. So on my walk here, I came across this fantastic mid-century modern house as well, right here in Chennai. Who knew that they had these wonderful mid-century modern architectural homes? You can see all the windows are squared off with boxes, all little ledges with the edging done in yellow. Now you can tell that that brick was, that, that brick was added after the fact. It might have been stone or something, but Here's some mid-century architectural elements on the outside. And the really piece de resistance of this house are these mid-century modern bricks. I mean, they are fantastic. Look at the, the way that the brick is like an outstretched person with the heads and the little lines. I mean, it's really amazing. I don't know, we, don't, we can't get those kind of bricks even at home anymore, but in the 60s they were trying to be daring and bold and make new, uh, new architectural enhancements, and so that's fantastic. So right here in the midst of Chennai, who knew, is a mid-century modern home that really kind of shows the mid-century uniqueness. And it, look at the even butterfly roof at the top. So fantastic find right here in Chennai. But here's the area for the tower. I don't know if it's a park or what it is. It might be an entrance fee. I don't know. I don't know anything about it, which is cool to stumble across something can see it it's like a mid-century modern um, you've arrived at your destination too 
digital cameras and instruments are not allowed inside the park. Okay, what about phones? So, the park is adopted by whatever. Okay, fine. Okay, so let's check it out. Okay, so I stopped at the Anne and the Guard Tower. And here is another mid-century modern inspired architectural design. And it has like a spired top or arching top, I should say. Very mid-century modern. It looks like at one point they have or they had water features, which is another mid-century thing. So that's fantastic. I don't know if you can go up it. but a very cool mid-century modern inspired architectural piece. <laughs> They're even playing like 1960s elevator music. <laughs> Let's see, let me sit here and see if I can find a little history on this place. Wow, pretty cool. Okay, so all I could find is that this was built in 1968, so definitely mid-century, um, and it was built, it's the tallest uh, park tower there is in Chennai, um, and it's not open any longer. Let's see if the sign over there actually has some information. It, the one site says it opens in the afternoon, but then another site says it's been closed for a while, and I don't know, so, um, Dr. V.V. Geary, Chief Minister of Madras, 1968, towers opened by Sadhu Jasin, Governor, so January 21st, 1968, and, oh, Maybe, oh, that's not for the tower, the tower is at, that's just like for, if you want to buy some plots. Someone's selling, selling some stuff, I guess they're renting out the space, but you can see how nice it looks. So mid-century, that's fantastic. And the spiral design starts at the base here, and then it works its way up. Let's see if I can count how many spirals. So we'll say this is the starting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then the top. So very nice. Very cool. That's a nice um, cement design. Textured cement on the walkway so you don't slip as you climb. Metal uh, gate that goes all the way. Take a right onto the path. Then, in 200 then feet, take a left on six main road. Five little moats of water that I'm sure at one point had beautiful fountains and lights. You can see the lights. So the tower was lit up and the water was lit up. You know, very 1960s. Right here in Chennai, India. For all my 60s mid-century lovers. This is a thing to see in Chennai. Let's see if I can step back and get the top, or at least I'll insert a photo here of what the top looks like because it's nice um, archways. Um, made out of cement and it has a walking platform all the way around it so it's like a lookout tower. Very nice. So the tower stands 135 feet and it's 12 stories tall with the top being the 13th floor and it's surrounded by a 15 acre park. They say it's one of the um, remaining open parks in Chennai that people come to in the evening and hang out. So it's really nice and relaxing and has little paths that meander everywhere, um, all centrally located around this tower. So. It's a really cool find. I just had to show this house coming across. It's a it's a really lovely house with the look at the roof tiles are all like 
little scoops. They're beautiful. And they have all these lovely hanging uh, ceramic chimes and, and sun, Syrias. And they have a ward off evil. And even at the front of the gate, they have like, I don't know what that is, a Vishnu demon warding off demons or something, but really pretty house. Okay, back at the train station. But Yep. on Google Maps it looks like I can go to St. Thomas Mount. The St. Thomas Cathedral is about seven miles away which I've been to before and that's where the body of St. Thomas is but this is the mount where he was martyred or killed um, and it's a Christian pilgrimage site obviously and I've been there but I'm going to go check it out since it's the last stop here on the metro station. It should be, you know, something to go see. So. Okay, finally got some water. So thirsty. I have a little supermarket that you had to take your shoes off to go into. <laughs> uh, anyways. So, uh, Head east on MKN Road I'm toward Pitta Street. I'm to walk as far as I can. It's like, it says a two and a half mile walk, which I'm fine with. Darn sunny. <laughs> I might have to pull out my scarf from my head because it's, I can already feel it, it's getting hot. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take a walk as far as I can go. Then I know a lot of it is uphill. So maybe take a tuk tuk there, walk back. Maybe take a tuk tuk there, tuk tuk back. I don't know. Maybe walk there and back. I mean, this is what I'm doing today, so there's no immediate rush, but... Okay, it took me a hot minute to get here, but now is the way we go through that park area and up the hill, so... On the right track, it says about 20 minutes of walking, so here we go. Okay, meandering through the streets. It's a nice neighborhood walk. It's kind of quiet here. Us is a little tired from walking. That says English Church over there. Okay, the track continues. This is basically entry to the hilltop, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. I was kind of going around the town there, but there's a separate entrance right here, so. Okay. I hope you don't need to take your shoes off right here, because that's a long journey. Hopefully it's only at the top. I really love this pathway. It has all of these Stations of the Cross going all the way up and ending up at the top of the mountain there. And for Catholics, at each Station of the Cross, they're going to pray, they're going to reflect. And so it's a nice pilgrimage to start from here, to go all the way to the top of the mountain and think about St. Thomas and Jesus and everything that happened in this area. And in case you're not familiar with St. Thomas, he is one of the original 12 apostles of Jesus. And he, after Christ's death, went to India. 
and he went to Trisher to a town called Palayor, which is in Kerala. I've actually been there. Um, he landed there because close to there was a Jewish settlement. And so he came to India to be with fellow Jews and then to spread the word of Jesus. And Thomas is probably well known for being doubting when Jesus died and rose from the dead and he saw Jesus. He did not believe that he was Jesus and what he was seeing and As such, Jesus told him to look at the wounds and put his hand in his side where he had been pierced. And only was it then that he that he did those things did he realize that that was Jesus who had come back, who was resurrected from the dead. So um, the evangelism of Thomas focused in India, and many of those early Christians were because Saint Thomas came to India, and this. This walk is like a very strenuous walk. It is really difficult. Those stairs are slanted, um, and it's like going up and up and up and up, straight up almost. And I didn't want to have you hear me huffing and puffing all the way, so I've sped this portion of the video up. But man, it's an amazing journey. It's a pilgrimage for sure. It does make you contemplate everything as you look around this beautiful area and reflect on your spirituality. And I think, you know, if you are in Chennai and you're Christian, you have to do this pilgrimage. It's very cool. And I think it's something that you will remember for the rest of your life. And St. Thomas evangelized in India for 20 years. He was there 20 years, and then he was martyred or killed by the locals. He actually ran up this hill, and they speared him to death. And so this church here is put in commemoration of that um, time, And I think it was established in the 1500s. So it's been here quite a long time. So people can remember what happened to St. Thomas and the dedication he had to Jesus and the Christian mission. I was standing back there. I think there's a chapel back there. And uh, watching the head festivities at night. And they were doing it on the stage here. Whew. Okay. So, I don't know what they're building. Like a little platform or a stage. Hmm, interesting. Oh, there's an Indian plumeria right there. Right, look, you can see the view. What a view! Wow, wow, wow! Let's see if we can check it out. That's the metro that I was on, and this is the area we passed through. Of this remembrance of this church. I'll go in a little 
little bit. I can't take video in there. And you have to take your shoes off. St. Thomas touching Jesus' wounds as he was called down in Thomas and then here he is being martyred or being killed by the Indians. Okay, I was given permission to video record. So if you can look closely in the center, it does look like a face, face of Jesus. So it looks like a face, you can see, the nose, the eyes, the eyebrows. And actually, um, the docent was telling me that that was being carved by St. Thomas up here. Um, and then it bled for many, many years. So it's like the bleeding cross, they call it. And it was carved by him by hand and up above is his finger bone held as a relic up here St. Thomas. and then here's a picture showing him being martyred by the locals and then on each side of the altar here is some relics of apostles the first six apostles bones that look like they're all bones here and then on this side are the other six relics of the apostles. And then here is a painting painted by St. Luke in 50 AD of Mary. So this is the altar here. And then um, here's, here's the actual altar. And mass is given here every Sunday. very special place to come to for Christians. And here's St. James. St. Andrew. St. Peter, the founder of the Christian religion, and Jesus himself. Of course, there's never any depiction of Judas because of his betrayal to Jesus. And let's just sit for a moment and take an ambience here, huh? So let's take a look from the back of the church. The view out the, to the front is lovely, where you can see this bronze statue. Jesus and St. Thomas. As with most Catholic churches, there's going to be some really beautiful relics. And these are relics of saints. Relics meaning a piece of somebody, a hair, a nail, a bone, a tooth, something that is of a saint. And 
usually they're encased in these beautiful gold containers and this one actually has a statue attached to it so just beautiful I, I mean these were just gorgeous and they have this just beautiful selection of different saints and their relics and beautiful old crosses from very long time ago just lovely St. Francis Xavier, who is down in Goa. St. John de Brito, I don't know where he is. And St. Teresa, Calcutta, that's Mother Teresa. And Now that I know, this is the replica of the stone in there they say St. Thomas was making that looks like a face, you know, when you look from a distance. So here's the replica. Um, and she was telling me it bled for so many years. Look at what memorabilia they have. I don't know what all those are candles. I thought they might be incense. But I remember I bought a whole bunch of rosaries before. They actually have even little um, medallions. A glow in the dark. Oh my gosh, I wonder if that's glow in the dark, Jesus. Okay, I had to buy a few trinkets. Great, thank you. I had to get a glow in the dark, Jesus and Mary, and then I got a keychain of Jesus that was would be representative of coming here. So very nice. Okay, that's the only souvenirs I'm buying the whole trip. <laughs> well, thanks again for watching another edition of Timmy Talks, and I hope that you enjoyed this video of making the journey to the mount uh, st thomas mount and looking at the relics and the church and everything that goes along with it it's a spectacular feeling to be here and um, i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did so from st thomas mount fair farewell and um, i'll see you soon Thanks.